Hello everyone and welcome to iBasiac, my YouTube channel for all your vacuum cleaner news, views and reviews and also, of course, unboxings because I can't review a vacuum cleaner if it's in the box, can I? Here's a vacuum cleaner in a very tatty box, familiar sight to many of you who watch my unboxings. I often get very tatty boxes but the vacuum cleaner inside this tatty box is supposed to be brand new and unused. The only thing that I know is wrong with it is the metal extension tube is a bit rusty. But I am hoping with a little bit of metal polish I should, fingers crossed, be able to remove the rust. If not, I will have to get myself a new extension tube for this Sebo Air Belt C cylinder vacuum. Another Air Belt C model. I wasn't going to bid on this, but at the last moment I thought, no, why not? So I bid on it and was fortunate, fortunate, fortunate enough to win the auction. Okay, let's take off the plastic. Let's uh, have a look. I hope it's okay. Uh, the machine colour, well it, it, yes, the machine is that actually that colour. The air belt colour is, oh I don't like the sound of that. I don't, no. No, think, think, think positively, it'll be fine. Or will it? Anyway, the machine colour is this blue and the air belt colour is a grey. It's a SIBO C3.1 and no power head on this model. I think it has a powered hose though with a remote control and I do believe that I can fit a power head to this and I do have a power head that will fit this. It's uh, anyway it's a 1500 watt motor, S-class filtration, active charcoal odour filtration, ultimate furniture protection from the air belt, whisper quiet with exhaust diffusion throughout the air belt, power control with standby switch in handle grip, comfortable to operate with patented handle design, Telescopic tube plus professional attachments. Excellent manoeuvrability on four easy glide casters. Right. This is the third air belt C model I've got. The other, oh no, is it the fourth? It's the fourth. I have the air belt C1. I have an air belt C3 power plus and I have an air belt C to total I think it is, but that was second hand, it was the red version. It's not been, oh, you see, they're pretty rugged these vacuums so I'm hoping it survived, but it's not been put in the box very well at all. Here's the main carpet and floor nozzle. A design that I believed was used on early Dyson cylinder vacuums. But that one, that's, that, that one has survived. There's no rust marks on the floor head there because it was in a plastic bag. Even though that bag has holes in it, it's fine. So pleased with that. That's your main carpet and floor nozzle. Pretty standard. Pretty good quality though, and you've got a pedal here obviously to lower the brush for cleaning hard floors. So that is the main nozzle. The other three small tools store inside this vacuum. Oh, you see it's just, you know, it's just not, the hose is crushed underneath here, it's a crush proof hose. Oh, I'll just put that to one side. It looks alright so far. Now, this little piece, I don't need it to make the machine work because it, it will still turn on and off and vary the power. This is used when you use a power head with the machine. And I do have the other fittings so I can use. I've got a large SIBO power head an older power head that will fit this model and I'll need that little 
I don't know what they call it, but that's what I need. So I'm glad that's in the box because I did see it in the listing and I'm thinking, well, I'm hoping they make sure that goes in the box because I need it. So there's that. Here is... Mm, now is that from a... I think that could be from a... It's not from this cleaner, I don't think. I think that might be from... I don't know, is it from a, a Vax? It's a clip for something to clip onto a tube. But I don't know if it's a clip for a solution a tube or is it a clip for a cable for a power head. I don't think it belongs to this machine from what I remember of my other... It might be, I don't think so though, but anyway, that's in there. Here is... Mm, it's a bit worse than I expected it to be. Here's the metal extension tube. It's all pitted with light rust. Inside looks okay. Now is it going to open up? Oh, yes. Oh, it's not bad. Of course, inside, that side's fine. It's been protected somewhat because it's been nestled inside this. I've got some good metal polish. So before the end of this video, I'll see if I can clean that up and show you it when I do the final shot of the machine. So I knew that that was in that condition. Mm. Hose looks a bit grubby. Let's just have a look in the box. Now there won't be any instructions in the box because the SIBO on this particular range, the instructions are stored on board. So that's it. All the polystyrene is broken so it wouldn't have protected the cleaner very much. This hose just needs a bit of a wipe over. It's not very long really on these. Here's the hand grip. You've just got a slide control that, oh no, it looks all right. Yeah. Turn it on and increase the power off. That's a little bit grubby. It just needs a bit of a wipe down. But apart from that, it seems fine. And we've got the SIBO branding, of course. So, okay. Now on to the main event, the vacuum cleaner itself that's had very little protection in the box. These are built like tanks. They're rather nice actually when I get my other SIBOs out because now, of course I've got four, I've got a grey one, a white one, a red one and now this blue one. I could do a nice red, white and blue display I suppose. Now. Apologies if the lighting's looking funny. Typical. It was lovely and sunny earlier, but this being Great Britain, the sun is now being hidden by some clouds. Okay. Right, little bit of a mark on there, but that isn't... that will wipe off. It seems okay. I never actually, when I was... Um, before I was collecting other brands, Apart from Hoover, I never really saw many SIBOs. They was tended to, be, tended to be sold in department stores. I did see the red version the, with a the turbo head in an Alders department store. I think that's the first one I saw in real life. I never saw this machine. In fact, it was only because of eBay I knew that this colour existed. I've seen a green one, but again, not in real life. Anyway, it looks okay. As I say, they are built, they're built very strongly. Much better quality than the Miele. The earlier Mielas were better than the Mielas you can buy now. Mielas are still okay, but I don't find the quality quite as good as the SIBO, especially the plastic. The plastic seems better. Anyway, it's okay. It seems fine. There's a little note here telling me that the operating manual is in the attachment cover. So let's see if it is by pressing this little button on the top here. If we can just see, just here look. Take that off. And there we go. Very good little idea that. But I expect if you buy one of these second hand they might go missing. But I think the second hand one I bought did still have the instruction book because it was stored on board. Can't think of many vacuum cleaners that do that. 
So I, I'm not expecting anything to surprise me in this. There we go. Now it says it's 520 air watts, which is pretty good. I don't know if that's at the hose end or the cleaner end. But then pretty basic instructions really. Not a lot to say about those. I'll just pop those back in. And here we have inside the onboard tools. Again, good quality, full size cleaning tools on this model. Dusting brush, a nice shaped dusting brush, triangular, so it gets into the corners of things when you're doing the dust dusting. I found that if you use it on too high a setting, the suction can be so powerful it tends to close off the nozzle a bit, so best only used on lower settings. There's a little design, can you just see there? That's the position it needs to be in when it's stored on board, but you can of course adjust the angle of the brush. If you need to clean up high, you can just vary it. It's a little bit stiff because it's new. So that's your dusting brush. We have a full-sized crevice tool, not like those little piddly things you get with many cleaners now that's about that long. This is about 30 centimeters, I'd say, 12 inches. So that should be more than a match for all your nooks and most of your crannies. And finally, on board, we've got Sibo's, or Hoover call it, all purpose nozzle, but it's like, that's what I'd call it, upholstery. I suppose it's your know, stairs, curtains, car seats. Got a little brush on the front. I did find with pets, a lot of the dog hairs do stick to that brush. Fairly easy to pull off, but um, they tend to gather. That brush does pop out, I won't do it now, but I can pull that out for a, for a more thorough clean. Thorough, I believe you say, in the USA, we say thorough. We also say herbs, not herbs, but anyway. Enough of the nuances, is that the right word? Of the American language. We all, you say potato, I say potato, or whatever they, that song, how. However that song went, let's see if I can angle this. Oops, <laughs> my flap is dropping. Try and open up my flap, hold my flap while I'm showing you. Oop, that way, down, left, oh, it's like the golden shot. Now I am too young to know what the golden shot was. I know a lot of you will be. Anyway, there we go. It was a quiz show if you're interested. And the, the viewers had to say left a bit, up, down, and then was it Billy or Billy the Bolt? I don't know. Anyway, I'm ignore me. There we go. I can't read it myself, but peruse that and digest if you want to. It'll say Made in Germany on it, I'm pretty sure. The day I see Made in China on a SIBO, well, that's the day I'm going to give up. Anyway, it's type... What's it say? Type SIBO about C3.1, serial number K402506, 240 volts, 50 hertz, 1200 watts to 1300, I don't understand these different wattage figures. It says 1200 watts, 1350 watts, but maximum 1500 watts. Stein and Company, made in Germany. Bag check indicator on the machine here. Other air belts I've got have a little power takeoff socket there. Um, can't remember which model it is. This one doesn't need the power takeoff socket because it takes its power from the socket here to power the remote control. You've got two very large pedals, one for your on, off, and of course one for your automatic flex rewind. Parking bracket at the back. Of course, got your fitted plug and your cable. Lovely, lovely quality. I've always liked the design quite a big cleaner but it's not excessively heavy like some 80s vacuum cleaners. It is as big as, it's about approximately the sort of size of a Hoover Sensortronic but it doesn't feel quite so heavy but it is a, certainly a better quality than the Sensortronic. Now on the back, very very manoeuvrable, four very good quality wheels, swivel casters with rubber wheels. 
And despite Dyson's ball cylinders that claim to be highly manoeuvrable, this one I can guarantee will be easier to manoeuvre than a ball. Four casters is better, in my opinion, than a ball. That's in my own experience of using various vacuums. I do love this. It's a bit wasted on this vacuum because you never really see it. But a nice little SIBO badge. You think they'd put that on the top? But it's sort of a nice sort of a raised little badge, little badge of honour, SIBO. And underneath, well, not underneath, here, on the top, we have similar symbol to you get on SIBO upright cleaners to show you that the bag can be accessed inside here. And to access the bag, just pull it up and the bag springs free, the whole bag and the whole bag door. And this uses the same bags as the X series uprights. It's fitted with the older style paper bag. Of course, I can fit the newer fabric dust bags to this. Obviously the X series is still a current model and I do like the fact, so if you had, you know, if you're very posh and you, you owned both an X series upright and a C cylinder, the bags were interchangeable. And when I was using SIBO cleaners, you know, when I went through my phase of liking to use SIBOs all the time, I still use them from time to time. I like using a lot of different vacuums. But anyway, I would have, say, my SIBO Essential or Professional G1 out, and I would have one of the air belts out, and I would just swap the bags. So I was only filling one bag, but I was using two different vacuums. This has got the top specification of filter. The C1, the first C1 I've got, has got a much more basic filter. This is the highest grade filter for this particular model. Replaceable but not, not washable, officially not washable. So that fits there. So that's the pre-motor filter. The post-motor filter is here will be a bit stiff because it's got a seal all, all the way around. There we go. Mm. Now that is odd because that doesn't shake. And I'm sure it said on the box, charcoal filter. I'm sure it did, let me just check. Active charcoal, so this isn't the active charcoal filter because the active charcoal filter would shake. It wouldn't, it wouldn't look like this. I think it's got a black, it's enclosed at the back and it's filled with charcoal particles to absorb the odours. This one is just a standard exhaust filter. I suppose the air belt is your final, final filter because once the air passes through the bag and through the pre-motor filter, it passes through this filter and then finally it exits the machine, diffuses through the air belt. So I suppose the fine material on the air belt is a sort of a filter. Anyway, so that isn't the filter that it says on the box, but ne nevertheless, it's a decent, decent filter. And it should, lots of decent quality seals all around the filter here and in the bag compartment. Let me just pop that on. And I'm looking at it the wrong way, you see. I've been no good on Blue Peter. I can't do things back to front. I don't know if they still do that on Blue Peter. Do they still make things on Blue Peter? I've not, I've not seen it in many a year, certainly not since it went to CBBC. Anyway, I'm a little bit old for Blue Peter. So, there we go, that's the, the bag. And that's the bag door. Obviously, if you don't fit the bag correctly, you can't put the bag door back. It'll fail safe, there's a little Doobry there, so I need to push it until it clicks. Well, it's not clicked, but anyway, you see what happened. That little little lever moved. So now I can pop it back just by locating this here, closing it, and then just popping that there. And that's it, Bob's your uncle. So, all in all, pretty pleased. I haven't switched it on yet, of course everything could go downhill from here 
what I'm going to do is plug it in and we'll hopefully it'll work and I'll get some metal polish and see if I can restore the slightly rusted extension tube. Well here she is all ready for her maiden voyage, her maiden use, her first use. I've managed, it's not perfect but I didn't spend very much time on it. Um, when I spend a little bit more time I'm sure I'll be able to remove the remaining rust marks but just in an initial quick clean it's still a little bit pitted but a little bit more elbow grease, a little bit more polish and I'm sure that that will come up fine so I'm pretty pleased with that. If the seller had spent some time possibly removing the rust they might have got more bids, who knows. But anyway, the seller's loss is my gain. I'm very pleased with how much I paid for this vacuum. For the price I paid for this very good quality German vacuum cleaner, I could have bought a very mediocre Chinese cylinder. But no vacuum cleaner is a bargain if it doesn't work. So after pulling out the flex, ooh, that's a little bit. I think it will benefit. I've never actually had one of these open, so I'm not sure how you open them, but I think the cord rewind mechanism could possibly benefit from a bit of lubrication, so I'll look into that. Here's the plug, British three pin plug moulded on. So let's plug it in. It won't turn on because it's switched off at the handle. There we go. And it's also, because the light hasn't illuminated, it's also switched off at the cleaner. So if I press this button, it shouldn't turn on, hopefully. No. And now you can just about see a little green light has illuminated, that's the mains on light. I believe that stays illuminated when the machine's on. There's also a bag full of indicator light and if memory serves me right, that is orange. That will light up when the bag's full or there's a blockage anywhere in the machine. Okie dokie. Let's pop the cleaner out of the way. Now, I've had a few, ex well not, blo not explosions, I've had a few vacuums misbehave on me of late, but I think this one will be okay. Right, let's see. I'm going to switch on, starting off on a low setting. Don't fail me now, I'm pleased with you so far. Oh, hang on. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Beautiful. I stayed quiet for the winding down. That reminds me, a little bit, little bit smelly, not too bad. That reminds me of my Electrolux 2020 Super Boost. That has a lovely sounding motor. And this one, right to the moment the motor stops spinning, it sounds lovely. Let's, uh, let's judge the suction. I'm not expecting great things suction wise, but anyway. Not bad, not bad at all. Let's just check that the bag full indicator illuminates when I block the hose. So that's good, no problem there. Everything seems to be functioning as it should. Oh, I'm so pleased. I'm pleased that the last minute I thought, oh, go for it, go for it. I'd always be wondering, you see, if I didn't bid, I think, you know, I think, oh, I could have had that. Something I haven't pointed out, <clears throat> there's another parking bracket here. 
at the side of the cleaner, just on one side I believe, yes, just on this side here. Well actually this is a, what I would call the storage bracket rather than the parking. For storage or carrying the cleaner, the parking bracket is the one at the back. One thing that's a little bit niggly about this is the hose, it does tangle a bit, I've noticed on these vacuums, because it doesn't swivel. It only swivels at the handle end, it doesn't actually swivel at the machine end, so it does, does tend to get a bit caught up sometimes. But all in all, yes, very pleased. I'll just give it a quick go over on the carpet. But I will be doing a proper demo with this, and I'll also be featuring a large power head, and for that I'll need to attach this little connection, which fits onto the handle here. I've turned the machine off, you just have to clip that into there like that, push that, and then this, I should have done it the other way around. This one goes into here, like that, nearly. Let me just do that there. That goes into there, and that goes into there. And now I'm ready to connect a power nozzle. Well, that's just about the end of my unboxing video and first look of this SIBO C3 power cylinder vacuum cleaner. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe and then you'll be updated when I decide to do a full demonstration video of this machine. I'm also on Facebook, links below, and I'm on Twitter as well. I tend not to use Twitter so much, but I do have um, a nice page on Facebook all about my channel and other vacuum cleaner related topics with some exclusive content. So check out Facebook and uh, please subscribe. Okay, let's give the SIBO Airbelt C3 Power a quick run and then I'm going to start using it myself and prepare it for the full demo to follow. There we go. See you soon and goodbye.